Hi everyone and welcome to today's German Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Let's get right to it. So last week we voted for Scene of the Week. Hi Alana! And the winner for Scene of the Week was when Laura was helping Kevin, bless you, uh, by a landslide by the way. Okay, let's get, oh uh, real fast, the ECAP video is up. Uh, kind of Sunday morning because Saturday just got so out of hand but the ACAP video is up so you can go check that out right now or after this video but I definitely suggest checking it out because I'm really proud of it and I found lots of cute pictures from when they were babies all right let's get right to it okay at the hospital Jordan doesn't want to jump to any conclusions about this new evidence that could or cannot be against Franco uh, but Amy does Amy wants to jump to all the conclusions and she says that um, she looked at the file and the only fingerprints on the vial were Franco's. So Valerie runs down the timeline. Amy says Franco was acting shifty and ominous and holding a flower because you know that just you, holding a flower would send him right to jail. Um, Amy tells them Franco's with Elizabeth and Jordan wants more information and she's kind of worried that he may hurt Elizabeth. And Dr. Maddox comes in and Jordan asks for his help. Hi E-Cat. E-Cat's here. And uh, Valerie says that Elizabeth's phone keeps going to voicemail and Jordan fills Andre in un second. Come here. Come here, Bubba. Come here, little baby. Hello, baby. Hello. There's a whole video about you and your mama and your sisters. <laughs> All right. There you go. She hasn't made an appearance in a while. Okay, where were we? So, where were we? Okay, so Dr. Maddox comes in and Jordan asks for his help. Valerie says Elizabeth's phone keeps going to voicemail and Jordan fills Andre in on what's going on. Uh, he tells her that Franco does have a weird obsession with death, but other than that, you know, he's, he's perfectly fine. And Amy gets Jordan the keys to the art therapy room and she asks Andre to come with her to help her. See? Reaching out for help. Hey! Jordan found a sketch of one of the victims in the style of a death mask in Franco's room and then the second victim and a third and they're all numbered and Amy is there to really push you know really push that and Andre said it doesn't mean he's a murderer like this is how he copes you know and Amy oh but then there's on the next page and it has four and it's blank and they're like how could he have known about the fourth victim I don't know because serial killers usually have like more than three victims or you know they they serial kill that's what they do and I, I always number my pages early too so you know that if that if that means that I'm a murderer then I'm in a lot of trouble uh, so but I thought it was interesting Amy got the keys so she could have planted things before she gave the keys to Jordan just my personal theory so let's go oh, at the studio so it is indeed Franco's studio and Liz is kind of weirded out as you would be if you were brought to a dark art studio of someone who used to be a serial killer and would serial kill people in their studio and she seems to start to feel more comfortable as the night goes on uh, so there's some weird talk about the bad reception in, in the studio and Elizabeth is trying to text her babysitter just so she has a general idea of where she is and he keeps making jokes about her calling the cops and she asks if he wants to put some lights on and he does and there's a lot of stuff but none of it's like outright like weird you know what I mean uh, they talk about art and it's time it's about this time that I remember that Elizabeth paints uh, so he wants to show her something he did that isn't motivated by anger but she might find it disturbing and she's like oh dear here it comes here it comes other shoe dropping and it turns out that he painted her and it's absolutely gorgeous she's wearing like this um pink low-cut gown and like looking over her shoulder and it really is beautiful and they bond over art and he didn't know she was so into art and he um tells her that she should get back to it and they come to this agreement or this whatever that they're gonna paint each other at the floating rib Nina is reading the crimson responses and crying at the bar, as you do. And Curtis comes in and Nina tells him that she's pursuing the organ transplant case because Carly may be getting pushed back, but she's not. Uh, she, you know, she doesn't have to worry about the family's emotions or anything because they're not her family. Uh, so she's hiring Curtis to help fact check. And Nina says that she thinks she outgrew Franco, which were my exact words, by the way. And she doesn't think Franco wants to grow because he can't control a part of him. And then, of course, Jordan and Valerie, like, overhear that part, right? So Jordan asks Nina and Curtis if Franco was there. And Nina's like, I don't know. Well, he's not here now. Like, do you see him? And Valerie comes over and says she got in touch with the babysitter who said Liz is at Franco's art studio and then Nina's like 
after they leave, she like goes to Curtis and she's like, he didn't waste any time, right? And Curtis says that she shouldn't be at the bar alone. She's beautiful and vivacious, and she really is. At the Metro Court, Carly is babysitting Roxy, and Finn comes over and he kisses the lizard, and Carly's like, okay. Uh, so his trip was shorter than he expected, but he got everything done apparently. And Carly gets a call, it's business. So Finn is take, talking to Roxy, and someone behind him makes a comment, and it's Jack! And I had an actual literal scream of excitement. I was literally like, ah! And I don't know. It's not even like he's particularly like my favorite favorite. I'm just so glad to see him back. I don't know about you. I just, I love him. So they talk about Roxy. Finn's impressed with him. And then Carly returns and she's like, not as uh, excited as I was to see Jax, to say the least. And she should have watched the commercials because it was all over that he was coming back. So it's kind of tense and awkward to say the least. Uh, she introduces the two of them and Finn's like, oh, like, okay. And Jax is like, okay, this is the lizard. You're the you know, person I've been hearing so much about. So she tells Jax that Finn helped uncover the name of the administrator. And Jax is like, hey, thanks for the help, but we won't need it anymore. Ha <laughs> ha. So Finn asks Carly why she changed his mind. And Jax is like, Jocelyn asked her to stop. And Finn tells Carly she's making a mistake, but ultimately it's her decision. He just wants it to be an informed decision. So Finn leaves and Jax asks Carly if she's really given up the search because he knows her. Back at the hospital, Finn comes back and he asks for Amy's help to reestablish his lab. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so now our hostage group is on a different island, stranded on a different island, that I am calling Gilligan's Island, just so you know. A little fun we have. Whimsical. We're very whimsical here. So they're now stranded on an island and are on the lookout for boats, and Sam wants to go look for Jason because he's not with the group. So I've assigned everyone a role. So Laura... Uh, she's Gilligan, okay, because she's the most notable character there and she does things that she's not exactly qualified for like, you know, surgery, but somehow everything seems to be okay and we love her no matter what. Uh, Kevin is the professor, obviously. Dante, I've decided he's the skipper. It was between him and Jason for the skipper, but since Jason's not here right now, then Dante's the skipper. Lulu's Ginger. Uh, Sam is Marianne and Ava is Mrs. Howell. I was originally thinking her ginger, but then I couldn't figure out another better Mrs. Howell, so that's how it's gonna work. Uh, I know there's no Thurston Howell, but no one really fits Thurston Howell. Uh, so Jason got out before the plane blew up, but he stayed behind to shut down the engine to try to prevent an explosion. And Ava is just ready to call Jason dead right now because she didn't watch the show two or three years ago. Uh, so she doesn't know. She doesn't have faith like we do, right? Uh, so they want Sam to wait until the sun comes up to go look for Jason. And Sam's like, no, and heads off. Uh, but then she faints and Dante catches her. So Ava hears a boat and uh, they don't get its attention. Uh, Lulu tells Dante she found something on Castine Island that upset her. She shows him the bracelet. He asks if it's Luke, and she's like, I hope not, because it was on a skeleton. And now, end scene! I know! How'd that happen so fast? Uh, so Amy says she can't help. Uh, he needs to talk to Obrecht, and he begrudgingly is going to. And he makes a comment about how well she keeps secrets, because she's like, hey, can I know what you're working for? And he's like, well, you're the one here that can keep a secret. And she's like, haha. Huh. <laughs> um, Jack thinks Carly's lying because he was married to her and he knows her lying face and he thinks she's lying about this whole dropping it thing. Curtis offers some advice to Andre about Jordan and needless to say, didn't go over well. Uh, Liz and Franco are eating, he cooked, apparently it's really really good and I'm kind of jealous. And there's a knock at the door, it's Jordan and Valerie and they have questions. Uh, Nina is going back to her room but there's footsteps and she's surprised by someone. Uh, Dante tells Lou not to jump to conclusions. Sam wants to head out for Jason and there's footsteps. So Sam goes running into the woods yelling, Jason is that you? And I'm like, sorry not sorry, she's a professional and would not do that. Like come on, especially knowing that it could be Valentine's Men. I, personally, Sam would not do that. That, that was not realistic. Um, Okay, anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, what are we going to vote on this week? It's up to you. I have kind of the small list compiled, but, you know, um, feel free to leave suggestions because I don't really know where this week is heading. I guess I'll read the descriptions for the rest of the week to kind of have an idea. And I will see you tomorrow on time for more General Hospital. Really exciting. I'm off this week, so every day should be on time. Hopefully, that's the plan. And um, so, yes, I will see you tomorrow, and I hope you have a great day. And don't forget to check out the ECAT video. All right, bye.